So we're making mocha java macarons today and first thing we're going to start with is we're going to grind us some fresh coffee beans. You're going to want to grind these real fine like espresso powder. So I got my fresh coffee beans and I'm just using a hand grinder to get these all nice and powdery. We're going to need two tablespoons of the coffee beans. Okay, so now that I've got this all ground, I think I've got enough coffee grounds in here now. That should be enough. Let's see if that's two tablespoons. We'll measure this out. Should be as uh, about as fine of a powder as you can get if you're grinding it at home. There's one. Doesn't have to be super accurate, but there's two. All right, perfect. And I am now gonna do 90 grams of powdered sugar. Let's see how close we can get. little more boom 90 grams 90.2 to be exact all right now we're going to need 115 grams of almond flour so zero this out and then we're going to do 115 grams of almond flour in there fine ground almond flour Whoa, a little too much, 134, that's all right, we'll pull some out. Boom, just put it back in the bag. 118 and 116, that's close enough. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and sift these right into the bowl, everything together. All right, so after sifting this completely out, you'll probably be left with a little bit of the almond flour and just the larger crumbs that couldn't make it through the sift. And that's all right, you'll just dump that down the sink, but gently rub it into the mesh there and get as much of it through as you can without, without pressing. Just gently kind of massage it with your fingers. And then if you're left with about that much, that's fine. Just dump that right in the sink. Okay, now that that's all sifted through, you're gonna make a little well in the middle of your sifted ingredients here. We're gonna crack one large, extra large actually, one extra large egg into here, just the egg white. So be careful to separate the yolk out cleanly. Just like that. Okay. And after you've got the egg white in there, you're gonna stir that into the mixture real nice and carefully. Got my little helper in the kitchen today, doing a great job. So if it gets a little bit too hard to mix this with your spatula, you can always ditch the spatula and do something me and Paul Hollywood both prefer, and that's get your hands dirty. Just get your hands in there and massage it all together, and eventually this is going to come out a perfect, perfect consistency paste. All right. Get your cling wrap over that. Stick it right down on the batter itself. Press it in real nice so air doesn't get to it and dry it out. And then we're moving on. Okay, to make the meringue, we're gonna do a full one third cup of sugar right into the saucepan here. Oh yeah. 
right? And then two tablespoons of water. Would you like some help there pouring the water, assistant chef? Okay. Okay. Now you're, now. now you're gonna stir it. Stir it a little bit in there. Careful not to get it on the sides too much, right? Yeah, we want to keep it down in there nice. Great. So this is eggs. One egg white, extra large egg white, and to your bowl and then this goes on your stand mixer if you have one your kitchen aid so we got our sides all clean in our sugar and water mixture now and we got the oven going sorry the stove going i like to turn it on to about number seven and once it starts boiling, we let it boil for about two minutes. Um, when there's about a minute left, we're gonna start our kitchen aid here, whipping it, whipping this egg white, so it starts getting a little bit uh, fluffy before we start adding the sugar mixture to it. Okay, it's been about a minute of boiling, and now we're gonna start whipping our egg oh and it's not plugged in awesome let's plug that puppy in okay now we're gonna start whipping our egg start it on number six that'll whip for about a minute When there's about 30 seconds left, yeah, there's about 30 now, so let's move it up to 8. And this will be done here in about 10 seconds. Pour this in here, now that these are whipping nice and kind of white. Pour it nice and slow right down the side there. If you pour it in too fast, you're going to scramble your eggs. And that never turns out nice. Now we let that mix until, if you feel the side of your bowl at the bottom, it's really, really hot. It's going to mix. You're going to want to mix this until it's not hot anymore. It'll take about five minutes. Okay, so it's been about five minutes here. The side of the bowl is cool. No more heat coming off of there, so we can turn this off. Pull it up. And then it should have a nice stiff peak like that. And then just tap all that off in there. Alright, everybody in your house will love that sound. Then bring it on over to the batter mixture that's been covered up. And you're going to want to do about a third of this mixture in there at first. And you don't have to be real gentle with it at first. You can mix that up kind of rough, kind of bash it around. You're not trying to keep the air in it at this point. You're just trying to give it a nice solid mix to incorporate some of that egg white. Lighten up the batter a little bit. And once you feel like that's kind of lightened up and that's going to be easier to 
mix in your other two thirds of meringue mixture here. Scrape off your bowl scraper. Let's get to the rest of the other two thirds here. Pop that in there. Now, this is where we're a little bit more gentle. We're going to fold this in around the bowl and through, around and through, around and through. And just keep on doing this until you feel like it's all incorporated nicely. Then I'm going to show you the consistency you're going to be looking for too. Make sure you scrape the bottom of the bowl real nice and clean. Just keep going on and through. Clean your scraper off every once in a while. Make sure all that stuff on the scraper is getting incorporated thoroughly. On and through. Looking great. Okay, so at this point we're going to check the consistency a little bit. So you want to see a slow drop. That was not a slow drop. That was just a fast drop and then a plop. Not quite ready yet. We want to get it smoother than that. You want it to run off slower, more like hot lava than a plop. And for those of you saying, I don't know how hot lava would run off a spoon, well, I'll show you here in just a minute. We'll get silly with it here. All right. That's looking nice. Let's see how that's looking now. That's looking better. Much better. All right. Do one more. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. All right. Running off the spatula slower. All right. Now that that's mixed perfectly, we're going to go ahead and get us a bag, piping bag, and put this mixture in there. Okay. Easiest way to get this macaron batter into a piping bag is... Just put the piping bag in a cup like this, fold the edges over the cup, and you've got a nice, even little baggie to get this into. Just like that. Oh, so nice. All right, perfect. Then scrape off your bowl scraper. And you're gonna lift the bag out of there and voila. All right, now let me show you a little secret here. With your uh, baking sheet here, if you bake the macarons on your baking sheet, with the lips up, you'll tend to get hot spots around the edges, which will make your macarons lean one way or the other towards the heat. So what I like to do is flip this baby over and then put your parchment paper on the underside of this and bake it just like this in the oven. That way you won't get any hot spots around the edges that'll make your macarons teeter one way or the other. Okay, time to pipe our macarons. Get your batter all squeezed down real nice. It already is. Top of the bag a nice little twist. So you've got ample pressure coming through. And then we're just gonna cut off 
I like to cut off, I don't know, about a dime size hole is what I look for. So right about there should be nice. You can go bigger or smaller, it doesn't matter really. Well, probably not smaller. You don't want to go too small. And then to pipe these bad boys, it's just a straight down motion. Now whip it off. Straight down. Whip it off. Straight down. Whip it off. Straight down. Whip it off. Okay, after you get those all piped, carefully, carefully give your sheet a little tappy tappy. Some people drop, drop the uh, baking sheet. I like to just give it a little burpsy. It's resting on my palm and it's just like I'm kind of burping the baby right now. Burping the macaron babies. Oh. Oh yeah, get those bubbles out, little fellas. Okay. We're gonna drop that, and then these are gonna rest for anywhere between 30 minutes and an hour, just depending on how long it takes for them to get nice and smooth. You don't wanna bake them until you can rub your finger over the top of them without any stickiness. That's when you know you've got a nice sealed shell over the top and you can bake them and they'll expand straight up instead of explode on you. See you in an hour. All right, if you hear growling in the background, this is why. As I'm making my recipe, I got two golden retrievers having some fun in the background here. But anyway, I digress. While these are curing, while these little babies are getting their top hats on, we're going to be over here taking advantage of our time waiting by making our filling. So we're going to do an espresso chocolate ganache, which basically is going to involve, you're going to need a French press machine. French press machine. I just learned how to talk today. Uh, French press machine and quarter cup of heavy cream. We're gonna microwave this till it's really, really hot. And then we're gonna need a tablespoon of fresh ground coffee again. Uh, it's not going to be as fine of a grind as we did for the espresso powder for the actual macaron. We're going to do kind of a coarser grind for the French press. Um, and then we're going to need a tablespoon of room temperature butter here. So I think we're just going to start with that. We're going to put that in our bowl here. And... Oh, and then don't forget, we're gonna need chocolate too. So let's start by microwaving our heavy cream. We're gonna microwave that for a minute here. Let's see here, one minute. And we're gonna watch it. When it starts bubbling, we're gonna take it out and swish it around, stir it up a little bit just so it doesn't overboil in the microwave. Okay, when you're confident that your heavy cream is scalding hot and it's really steaming, take a look at that steam coming out of there. You're gonna wanna take your coffee grounds, get a tablespoon of that, Chuck that in your French press, and then pour your heavy cream straight in there with it. And then we're gonna let that sit. Give it a little swirly swirl. And then we're just gonna let that sit for five minutes. 
put the lid on. Just let it sit. And then while that's sitting in there, we're gonna get our chocolate chips poured in. So you're gonna want a half a cup of dark chocolate chips. Chocolate and coffee really complement each other. So half a cup dark chocolate. And then two tablespoons of milk chocolate chips. Just a little, just enough to give you a nice little sweet balance from all the dark and coffee. All right, get that all nice in there. And then I like to microwave this for about 30 seconds. gonna do that for 30 seconds in there that'll just get the chocolate a little bit warmer so it's more accepting of the piping hot cream the cream doesn't have to do so much work at that point to try and melt it all so as you can see after about 30 seconds in the microwave, that chocolate got kind of nice and gooey along with that butter in there. So it'll just be a lot easier to melt that up when we pour our heavy cream in there. Okay, it's been about five minutes. We're going to strain this pressure French press plunger down all the way. And then pour your heavy cream right back in. Takes a second for it to all drip out. It's got a strain through there. And that's what you're left with. All right, cool. So now we're gonna microwave this one more time. Get it nice and scalding hot again. Once it starts bubbling, pull it out, and it goes straight into the chocolate. And then we're just going to let that sit for a few minutes. Okay, now that this is set for a few minutes, we're just going to stir this all together. There's your chocolate ganache. Silky smooth with a hint of chocolate. And then you're just gonna pour this straight into a piping bag and it's ready to go when your macarons, after the macarons are baked. They're still over there, just chilling out. Looks like they're about ready, honestly. They look pretty dry. Let's try. Oh yeah. Dry as a bone. We'll throw those in the oven now. You're gonna bake those 300 degrees for 14 minutes. 300 Fahrenheit, that is. Oh, important side note on the uh, French press machine. Make sure it's dry. Make sure there's no water residue in your French press machine because water will curdle this chocolate. It'll make it clumpy and gross. So make sure your French press machine is free of water. All right, chocolate ganache. Bada boom. Into our piping bags. I don't know why I said bags, plural. It's one bag. There are not bags here. And it's at this point you can sneak a little taste of that too. Mm, delicious. Degrees. We're gonna do 14 minutes on these bad boys. Oh yeah.
see you in 14 minutes, little babies. All right, so four seconds, three, two, one. Time's up. Let's see how our little friends did. Ooh, they look like quintessential, perfect little macarons. All right, carefully take them out. And set them over here to cool. And then once these little fellas are cool, we're gonna do the filling and then a nice little topping drizzle to make them look spectacular. Okay, now that these are all cooled, I matched up equal sizes to each other and got the ganache all cooled down and uh, it's time to pipe these little cuties on. You don't want too much ganache in there, just enough to give you a nice little chocolate pop. at the end after these are all filled now we're gonna match them up and put the tops on give it a little smushy smush and there we go and continue on Okay, putting our last couple tops on here, and then we're gonna move on to melting our chocolate for the topping, the design for the topping. And on to the last little tidbit. So we're gonna do two tablespoons of dark chocolate chips. That was a little more than two tablespoons, but it's all good. That's probably long enough. Those look good. All right, so those are all hot and melting. We're gonna do a tiny little bit of coconut oil. So that's probably like a half a teaspoon. We're just gonna stir that in with the dark chocolate chips. This makes your chocolate a little shiny. Gives it a nice look when you add that coconut oil in there. Makes it nice and glossy. Also kind of thins it out a little bit so it drips a little better. And after you got that stirred up real nice, we're gonna transfer this over to a little sandwich bag and start piping it over the top of our macarons. Okay, got my sandwich bag lined up there. I don't like to waste a full-size piping bag for just a little bit of stuff like this. Transfer this straight in there. piping bag out, sandwich bag I guess, and then we're gonna get this, just twist this up, and then we're just gonna cut the tiniest little, tiny tiniest little corner off of this so we can do a real nice fine drizzle over the top of these. So I cut the tiniest little bit right off the tip of this sandwich bag so it drizzles a nice fine line. Just like that, nice fine line. Okay, so we're just gonna do our little design on top here. And 
And that was about the perfect amount. And there they are. Don't they look delightful? <laughs>